Welcome back to Island Bike Life. Today, we're gonna to be taking a head-to-head -head look at the all-new Santa Cruz Mega Tower and the Yeti SB150. These are two new enduro purebred race bikes to the market this year. They are fundamentally uh, pretty similar. They both follow this new lower slacker and longer geometry, sporting uh, slack head tubes, uh, pretty steep seat tubes, 44 millimeter offset forks, and uh, really long wheelbases. There are some primary differences uh, between the two, obviously. The first is the suspension platform. The new VPP lower linkage setup by Santa Cruz really is quite robust, and I do like it a lot. However, it takes a little bit more tinkering to get dialed in than other suspension platforms, including that uh, previous VPP uh, setup that Santa Cruz was using last year. Once you do get it dialed though, it really is a very engaging and uh, nice feeling suspension platform. The Yeti, however, uses their proprietary Switch Infinity Link. This is a whole nother beast that works in, in a very interesting manner in that when you're pedaling, it feels very stiff. Uh, it floats on two additional Kashima coated rails that change direction halfway through the suspension travel. So when you're going downhill, it feels very plush and almost bottomless, but offers really good anti-squat when pedaling and climbing. Geometry wise, these bikes are very similar. The one thing that does differentiate them is the split in the sizing charge. So Santa Cruz will offer uh, one additional size up to a double XL, whereas Yeti maxes out at an XL. What that means for sizing and potential buyers is that the large size Yeti covers almost the size range of the large and extra large Mega Tower. I fit quite nicely on my large SB150, but if I was to be purchasing a Mega Tower myself at 6'1", uh, with a 33 inch inseam, I would absolutely choose the XL Mega Tower, whereas the extra large 150 would be too big for me. Construction wise, they're, they're both uh, full carbon frames, though the Mega Tower does have a little bit more versatility than the 150. The 150 is definitely a buy it and forget it situation, whereas the Mega Tower offers a high and low position on their shock as well as the ability to extend or reduce your wheelbase by up to 10 millimeters by switching out your dropouts. Additionally, the Mega Tower offers both air and coil shocks from the factory, whether you're buying a frame only option or a full build kit. They both come in five trim levels uh, from an entry level point right around 6,500 or $7,000. So it's not cheap to get into here and you can spend all the way up to about 14,000 Canadian, depending on your build kit and if you're running a carbon wheel upgrade on the Yeti and the XX1 Axis Reserve setup on the Mega Tower, which is probably the most uh, expensive and bling factor bike I've seen to date. Overall, the, the two bikes are very comparable. They're meant really for the same purpose. So what it comes down to is how do these bikes behave on the trail and what are the different characteristics and mannerisms you might be interested in. When it came to climbing on these two bikes, I wasn't really surprised that I, the 150 was going to climb a little bit better, but I was shocked on just how much better it did climb. I did take the time to set up the Mega Tower appropriately as I had previously rode the Bronson and a Nomad and know that 10 PSI one way or the other can really make a difference in the pedaling platform on this new lower link BMP. <laughs> on the climbing section uh, for this test, uh, the SB150 just really can't be matched in its climbing ability in this enduro race bike category. <clears throat> the way the anti-squat works with the Switch Infinity really is uh, quite difficult to explain. I don't fully understand how it does what it does. I just know that it works and it works better than any other bike that I've pedaled uh, to date. I can say that without question.
The Mega Tower was comfortable and it did climb well, don't get me wrong, but in the climbing category of this head-to-head, -head, I absolutely have to give the nod in the wind to the Yeti SB150. It's just a phenomenal climber, whether you're on single track, fire road, or whatever the case may be. When you're in those liaisons on your enduro race, the SB150 is gonna get you to the top a lot quicker, a lot more efficiently, and you're gonna have more energy for your downhills. Talking about trail bike riding when it comes to these two is kind of an oxymoron. These bikes are not designed to do long, epic uh, trail rides. They're not an all-mountain bike, really. Uh, that's reserved for, you know, the Eddy SB130 and the Santa Cruz Bronson or even their Hightower, for example. But can they do it? Of course they can. I would say that these two bikes are pretty on par. They're both pretty long, but they're very well mannered. Uh, the only thing that I would say that might give the Santa Cruz a little bit of a, a little bit of a heads up on the 150 is that because the VPP is a very engaging pedaling platform when you're moving through the trail, the Mega Tower is perhaps, depending on what you prefer in your riding style, maybe a little bit more fun. I don't want to necessarily say that it's better than the Yeti, it's just a different feeling overall. Uh, I quite enjoyed it. It was very engaging, like I said, and very responsive and live the bike, whereas the 150 can at times feel maybe a little bit muted. So when it came to trail riding, I would say these two bikes are pretty tied. They're gonna get you out there. You're gonna have some fun, but if you're doing long three plus hour kind of trail rides, neither of these bikes is probably going to be the one that you want you're going to want to look at something else in their lineup but if this is the type of bike that you have or it's not as an important factor to you it'll get it done for you no problem at all so now on the descending both these bikes were fairly close uh, i wasn't really surprised with the outcome when i was trying to determine how i was going to best explain the differences and which bike might be better or worse than the other it was a little bit challenging because they're both amazing uh, they truly are and in the end i think it comes down to the feel of how their suspension platform uh, works uh, so like i said the mega tower is very engaging with that vpp setup you feel the trail a little bit more the small bump compliance is there no doubt uh, it's good in geo it's really good in corners and you can feel the bike hugging the terrain it didn't quite flatten everything out like i found the nomad did and it wasn't quite as poppy as the bronson ones either it was a nice balance that was fun and stable and really a great ride the SP150 is fast and stable, but in a different feeling way. It doesn't flatten the trail out in the sense uh, of making it dull, but it does just kind of eat everything up. You move over big hits and small chatter uh, and rocks and roots without effort whatsoever. And so you are able to, at least for me, maintain your speed a little bit more. I don't want to say that this is better or worse, it's just a different feeling and the bike maybe is not quite as engaging or as involved to ride as the Mega Tower was, at least for me. I find that that is the kind of the primary better? difference in that my 150 is a little bit of a point and shoot and it's going to go no matter what and I'm going to feel confident and get to the bottom and have a blast. Whereas the Mega Tower is kind of the same, but I'm gonna have to do a little bit more. I'm gonna be a little bit more engaged in that ride. And it was a nice change, I, I have to be honest. Uh, but both of them really are great. Going downhill is really what these bikes are made to do. And no matter which one you get on, you're gonna have an absolute riot, 100% guaranteed. So what are my final thoughts about the Santa Cruz Mega Tower and the Yeti SB150? And which one might you want to pick over the other and why? Well, both brands are really good. Uh, they both are very reliable and well-built with very good attention to detail. Early on in the run for the SB130, 150 and 100, there was some questionable quality control issues out of Yeti. 
Uh, however, it seems uh, by all accounts that has been rectified. I personally haven't had any issues with mine and I had one of the first uh, from the original run. And both of my local shops, Rock City Cycles and Beaufort Cycles, I've only had one issue between them out of all of the bikes that they've sold. So I don't know that the issue is as widespread as perhaps some of the internet forums might make it seem. That being said, Santa Cruz's quality control and level of uh, frame production really is second to none in the industry from what I've seen. And I would have absolutely no hesitation recommending Santa Cruz to anyone. So all that aside, what are you looking at then for making your choice? Well, for me, it comes down to kind of three things. Uh, what you want it to pedal like, if this is a bike you're gonna pedal around, how you want it to feel when you're going downhill, and which brand preference you might have. So when it comes to pedaling for me, like I said, the SB150 wins hands down. And when it comes to going downhill, uh, do you want a bike that's a little bit more engaging perhaps in the way the suspension feels like the Mega Tower? Or one that just seems to eat up and go through whatever you pointed at, like the 150, but is maybe a little bit less engaging of a ride? Only you can decide that. And lastly, which brand do you like or which brand do you prefer and for whatever reason that may be? Whether it's quality control, uh, attention to detail, you know, perceived uh, goodness when it comes to their warranty, or perhaps just the pedaling platform of their VPP or Switch Infinity Link overall throughout the course of your ride. Either way, you're not going to go wrong with one of these two bikes. They are hands down uh, in the top of any type of bike, regardless of category. I would take one of these on a long day, uh, all mountain, no problem. If I was doing a long cross country day, probably not the bike of choice but if it's the only thing you have you're gonna have a blast regardless of which one you choose so really try to take one out for a demo and really help make your decision i really hope you like this head-to-head -head look of the santa cruz mega tower and yeti sb150 if you like what i'm doing here think about hitting the subscribe and the like button leave me a comment down below and come and find me on instagram and as always thanks again for watching and let's go hit the trails